Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Mahe, and this is my first conference talk ever. This is also my first conference ever. And how wonderful that the organizers decided to put me on stage first. Now, being a baby in the world of conferences, I will obviously be setting a very low bar, which I think is a great convenience for the rest of the speakers. So you're welcome. My name is Mahe Iram Khan. I'm from India. I graduated from college this year, and I am now a software engineer at Anaconda. And I recently moved to Germany last Thursday. So pretty new in Europe. Now, that was my introduction and also a brief trailer of what I will be doing throughout this presentation, which is talking a lot about myself. So my talk is titled, Python Folks, Keep being warm and welcoming. People are staying in tech because of you. Now I know that is too long a title, I'm sorry. But this is an apt summary of my story, of how I came to be here and went from being someone who absolutely hated programming to becoming a software engineer by choice. All because and only because of the love that I received in the Python community. So do hear me out because this is important. I studied computer engineering in college because I couldn't get into medical college. And my father thought that engineering is the second best thing in the world to study. And I, of course, had no idea what to expect from a computer engineering degree because throughout my childhood, I was told that I must become a doctor. And for that, I must pass the medical entrance exam. Now, accidentally, despite studying for the medical entrance exam, I couldn't get in. And despite never studying for the engineering entrance exam, I got in. Unfortunately, after attending classes for about a semester or two, I realized that I did not like it. Despite my father thinking that computer engineering is the second best thing in the world to study, I did not like it. I found it boring and meaningless. They taught us 50 subjects at college, and I remember thinking that why the hell do they not teach us why they are teaching us whatever they are teaching us, you know? So, so do you, you remember how I was supposed to be in medical college but ended up in engineering college? Now, suppose I was in medical college and they were teaching about, let's say, the brain. There, I would know that I must understand the functioning of the brain in order to help people with brain problems. But why was I studying object-oriented programming? How was I ever going to help another human being by studying object-oriented programming? And isn't that a huge motivation behind doing most of what we do? to be able to help other human beings, to be able to contribute positively in the society. Engineering was meaningless. It was shallow and mechanical. By the end of second year of college, I was convinced that I will never be able to care about code. This is a screenshot of a part of a blog post that I wrote in college. I'm going to read this out to you. But my father says that with willpower, one can become a master at anything. I'm not, a I'm not a master at programming, but I don't have any desire to be one either. I don't even want to be just good enough at it so that I'll get a job, like some of my classmates do. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Does that make me stupid? Can you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree? You can sense the resignation in my voice. I have completely given up. Everything changed when I was introduced to the beautiful world of open source software. It started when I first got to know about Outreachy. Now, Outreachy is an open source internship program, just like Google Summer of Code. It has a slightly different eligibility criteria, but the pattern is the same. 
There is a month-long contribution period where people contribute to open source projects. And after the contribution period ends, the maintainers evaluate the contributions. And eventually, an intern is selected to work on that project for three months. So I got to know about Outreachy and decided to research about it. I went to their website and you know, started going through all the information they had mentioned there. And one piece of information that really caught my eye was the money. You can't blame me for it. I was a broke student. And broke students, as you would know, would do just about anything for money. You're lucky I wasn't selling drugs. Now, with the money as the motivator, I decided to prepare for outreach. So in my preparation, I taught myself about Git and GitHub and how to use it. You know, what is a repo, how to fork a repo, what is an issue, how to create a pull request, et cetera, et cetera. And now endowed with the power of Git and GitHub, I decided I will apply for outreach. So I went through the list of projects available in that cohort and decided to, to work on. And I spent a few weeks trying to understand what the projects were about, reading the documentation, talking to people. And by the end of the contribution period, I had made a few code contributions to those projects. Well, you guys know that I did not like programming, right? So my contributions, although I had worked hard on them, they were small contributions. They did improve the project, but only a little bit. So because they were not significant enough, I did not get selected in that year. But I had enjoyed the process. Git and GitHub was fun. So next year, I decided to apply again. And this year, when I went through the list of projects, one project caught my eye. It was a documentation project. And I thought to myself, well, I can't write code, but I can write words. I write blogs, and people read them, and they like them. I can write documentation as well. Of course, it's going to be more technical than writing my funny blogs, but it's still writing. It's words. It's English. I can do this. So I felt confident, and I decided that I was going to put in my 100%. By the way, the, the project was called Condor Forge. So I spent the first few weeks trying to understand what Condor Forge is, reading their whatever documentation they had, talking to the maintainers whenever I got stuck. And after two grueling months to understand what Condor Forge was, I was able to get to the point where I could find places in the documentation that I could improve. So I started creating issues and submitting pull requests and initiating discussions to improve the documentation. I worked very hard during the contribution period because I wanted this. I wanted the money, actually. So, so uh, I got selected. I was very happy, very happy indeed because Outreachy is an important internship program, and Condor Forge is an important open source project. But you guys know that I do not care about software engineering. You know that I could not care about code. So in my mind, this was just a one-time gig. That would make me some money, and then I would go back to being a lost young adult. So I'm now going to describe what my internship experience was like. It was three months. And let's see what it was like. So it involved my mentor asking me what I wanted to work on during the week and how I thought he could help me with it. Then the two of us would get together and devise a strategy to complete those tasks. When I attended community meetings, people would acknowledge my presence and provide extra details and context about the complex topics being discussed because I was new and knew nothing. Community members, other than my mentor, would reach out to me and see if there was anything they could help me with and would always provide help when I asked for it. My mentor would often check in to see how college was going and if we should ease up the internship tasks a bit and even skip a few if I needed time to focus on college or exams or anything else happening in my family. And he would always call me out if, I, if he caught me overworking. Yes. Me, who hated programming and software engineering and everything related to code, was overworking because I enjoyed it. And once, when I was upset after an argument with a close friend, you know, we had a big thing, and then I couldn't, 
couldn't work because, you know, I was all stressed out. So my mentor sensed that and he told me to take a couple of days off and take care of myself. That was the sweetest thing he had done. Um, community members would publicly acknowledge my, com the completion of my internship tasks. And they would tell me, thank you, Mahe, for improving Condefort. So you see, those three months were not really a hardship. These were good human beings. I loved being around the folks at Condor Forge. And, but, you, so, you know, since then I have had the time to, to analyze what exactly were they doing right. And I'm going to summarize it here. And this is where you would want to take notes. They were publicly acknowledging me and my work, making me feel seen. They were being considerate of me in meetings, knowing that I was new and needed more context to understand and participate in discussions. They did not want me to feel left out. They were telling me that my work mattered and added value to the Condoforge project, thereby helping its thousands of users. This helped me find meaning in what I was doing. I was helping thousands of people who used Condoforge. They were encouraging me to speak up in meetings and discussions, suggesting that my opinion also mattered. With the Condoforge people, I felt seen. I felt secure and that I belonged with them. So my internship was about to conclude and of course this was supposed to be a one-time gig, but I had a major change of heart. I decided that I wanted to stick around with these people and continue working. I let my mentor know. He, of course, was supportive. Now we had to figure out what I wanted to do next. I got really daring. I told my mentor I wanted to code. My mentor, of course, being a Condoforge guy, was supportive. I decided I wanted to, so I went through everything that was going on at Condoforge, and it's a lot. And I decided I wanted to try adding a much requested GitHub support feature to Grayskull. Grayskull is, an, is a Condoforge project written in Python. So, of course, I couldn't code. So I reached out to another kind community member and I requested them to mentor me through this huge endeavor. Of course, they agreed. They are to forge. With their support and guidance, I was able to achieve my goal of adding that feature to Grayskull after four months. And on the way, I learned to code in Python. My mentor essentially held my hand and walked me through it. And not once did he let me feel that I was inadequate. This is a screenshot of my pull request being merged. I wrote 300 lines of Python code for this. I was very proud of myself. I then joined Anaconda as an intern and continued working on Grayskull, adding another highly requested feature to it after four months. I am now a software engineer at Anaconda and help make Conda, the Python package manager, also written in Python, better. Done, that was my story. And if there's something you could take away from it, I hope it is this. Allow for non-code contributions to, to your open source projects. Make it a point that a non-code contribution is possible and encourage such contributions. And be mindful that this is not lowering the bar. This is opening your project to people with diverse skill sets. And of course, keep being nice, warm, and welcoming because people are staying in tech because of you. Thank you very much.